Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So, I'm finally back with my monthly favorites for the month of February. I am doing this a little bit early just because I'm going to be kind of busy over the next few weeks. I just had to take a week off of work because I got hurt. Um, I kind of took a spill and hurt my head um, right in this area and then it did some damage to the back of my neck a little bit. Nothing too um, serious, thank God. I was very lucky. Um, it's difficult for me, but I'm dealing with it the best way I know how, um, just by resting and just by resting in bed. Uh, taking things easy, which is the reason why I've been kind of silent on here lately, but I also did go through a couple of things that I will talk to you guys about in a couple seconds, but I just want to let you guys know that if I feel, if I look like I'm not 100% right now, it's because I'm not, I really am not 100%, I'm actually um, kind of like fatigued. Just really tired, so yeah. Um, but I did want to come over here and just film with you guys because I miss filming, and it's one thing that makes me very happy. But that brings me to my next thing. Um, before I even got hurt, I was kind of in a lull, and I found myself really upset and very just disconnected from everything that made me happy, and it made me really upset because. I hate being unhappy. If there's one thing that I just, it takes so much out of me is being unhappy with everything in my life at the moment. And um, I'm not saying I'm depressed. I mean, I did I did suffer from depression when I was younger. Um, I just found myself very not in love with everything that I thought I loved so much, including doing this. And I found myself not wanting to do it anymore, which really scared me because you guys know how much I absolutely adore filming and doing all these things it makes me really happy or so I thought by the way if you hear the TV Nick's watching TV in there he's watching Family Guy so if you hear things that's what that is um however um like I said over the past few maybe week and a half almost two weeks now I've just been so uninspired and it really brought me down to a level of negativity that I never really have been in actually in a very long time. I felt like I found myself staying out of my beauty room, staying away from my makeup, not playing with my palettes, not playing with my lipsticks, not creating looks and everything. And that really made me sad because makeup really is the highlight of my life when it comes to hobbies. I just absolutely adore doing it. I love being a makeup artist and doing people's makeup and doing people's hair and doing all these things and filming and I just was uninspired. And I'll go into another thing I want to talk about in a couple minutes, but um it just, it just all had to tie in each other, and it just made me feel so, I don't know. You never really realize how much you miss something, how much you love something, until you remove yourself from it completely. And it just, it brought it back to me. So today was the first day that I actually woke up, that I wasn't in a lot of pain, and decided to do my makeup and do a full face, except for my lips, because I have one product I want to talk to you guys about that I just got. I am doing better and I'm excited to get back into the swing of things and start filming. It's going to be a lot harder for me to do things in the next couple weeks just because I am still recovering from that fall and I am in a lot of pain. Sitting upright is the biggest pain in my ass and it hurts a lot but um, I figure you know I'm on medication so if I take the medication well enough in advance I won't feel as much pain. So. Yeah, that's what's been going on lately. So let's just go into the favorites video. I'm going to start with my beauty favorites. I'm going to end with my non-beauty favorites, which I, I, I'm I, kind of excited to get into. Not really excited, but I'm, I'm anxious to get into because I feel like I have something I want to say about a couple of things, and it all fits together. Like, one of my favorites is in that section of the non, non-beauty favorites, and it all, like, fits together. So, anyway, my first beauty favorite of the month has been my Makeup Forever Artist 2 palette. I am in love with this palette. Everything about it is absolutely stunning. The quality of the shadows, it's outstanding. It's There's no comparison to these shadows. Super creamy, super pigmented, and you can get so many different looks off this one little nine color palette. It's amazing. I absolutely love it. My favorite color, the one color that really inspired me to buy this thing was this green right here. Because I've been really into greens lately. I don't know why. I've just seen myself drawn to green colors. So I'm going to go ahead and swatch it on my, arm, my, my hand right here. Look how gorgeous that is. It is super, super creamy. So this is on sale on Sephora.com. I'll link it down below for you guys if you're interested in getting it. I was hoping they would have the other palettes on sale too. Because I would grab the rest of those too. Because I absolutely love these shadows. But they're not, they're not on sale. So... But I'll link this one down below for you guys to check out if you have not have it already. My next favorite is the NYC palette collaboration with Demi Lovato. This to me is the prettiest palette that NYC Cosmetics has put out 
to date. I don't know what LA Colors or what NYC has been doing differently with their shadows, but I am super impressed with this palette. It was, I want to say, maybe like, the cheapest I've seen this palette was like four or five dollars. The most I paid for it was seven dollars, which was at Target, so avoid Target. But I absolutely adore this palette. The shadows you get in this palette are gorgeous. On the back of the palette, you have three different um, quad options that you can achieve three different looks with. I think they did a really good job of putting these shadows together because it's very seldom that I find these kind of palettes that actually have a great color scheme to them. I've seen a couple of them that, you know, from especially from NYC Cosmetics, that have been, you know, that they thought it was going to work, but it never really worked out because the colors didn't really go together. This is a beautifully well put together palette, so I'm very impressed with that. The quality of these shadows reminds me a lot, a lot of the Wet n Wild eyeshadows. You guys know how much I love Wet n Wild eyeshadows. You guys know how much I collect Wet n Wild eyeshadows, and speaking of which, they just released their limited edition spring collection, so I'm going to be looking out for those. You know I collect them, I have to have them, and they look gorgeous this year, so very excited about that. But I will go ahead and swatch my favorite color out of this one. This is this like almost goldish rose gold here. Super, super opaque, so creamy. A little bit of fallout, you can see right there, some didn't just fell down, but it is honestly gorgeous. I cannot wait to play with this palette some more. I have worn it a couple times and I'm just thoroughly impressed, but I wasn't going to put it in this video because you guys know that I like to go through with my products and use them for a month straight before I do any kind of review, but this honestly, the past three times I've used it, has impressed me so much that I wanted to put it in here because it's just that good. So if you have not gotten this yet or if you can't find it, I found mine at Target. Some people are finding theirs at Walmart. I haven't seen mine at my Walmart, so I don't know where to find them, but I found mine at Target. That's probably your best best bet is to find it there. So yes, if you've been skeptical or if you saw the Emily Noel review, I mean, I normally love Emily Noel, but I feel like she did this palette a great injustice comparing it to the Naked palettes. Even though there were a couple of, you know, close enough dupes in this palette for the Naked palettes, I don't think it was, you know, a good idea to compare it to those palettes because, of course, it's not going to be as amazing as the Urban Decay shadows. We all know this is a $6 palette. $6 compared to a normally, what, like $40 palette with the $50 palette with the Naked shadows? It's not going to be nearly as good as those, but you know what? For being a drugstore palette, this is an excellent quality palette, and I would put this up against any of the L'Oreal, the Revlon palettes, all those. This would beat all those. So if there's a fair comparison to make with this, I would say this would beat out all of the palettes that we have in the drugstore right now. The nudes palettes, these are better than those. So that would be a more fair comparison. So normally I like her comparisons and her reviews, but that one was a little bit too much for me to really agree with. So I suggest getting this palette if you've not already. My last eyeshadow favorite is going to go to my BH Cosmetics 26 color neutral eyeshadow and blush palette. I have had this for a little under a year now, and I cannot tell you how many times I will grab for this palette just because of the simple fact that they have some of these sh the most beautiful shades in this palette that I cannot find anywhere else, and one just dropped. That hurt my neck. <laughs> I absolutely love how pigmented and how beautiful their shadows are. Super creamy, so opaque, so easy to work with, and once again, we're looking at a palette that has been put together so nicely with the kind of shades you would expect to find in a look that you can create with this. You have your browns, you have your taupes, you have your pinks, you have a nice maroon shade, which is the main reason I bought this palette was because of these two colors. I absolutely love maroons. I've said this a thousand times on my channel. I absolutely adore this palette. So if you've never Never invested or tried out a BH Cosmetics palette, I highly suggest this palette. And I'll link it down below for you guys if you want to check it out. My next two favorites are both from the same line, and I'm super, super excited about how amazing and quality these both are. So my first favorite in these two little favorites I'm going to show you guys is the Wet n Wild Color Icon Contouring Palette. This one is in Caramel Toffee, and I know that you guys have heard so many things about these palettes, so many mixed reviews. So this palette is, I think I want to say like $3 at most at Walmart. My most favorite thing about this palette is the fact that you get so much product. This is a lot of product. You have 0.46 ounces, 13 grams of product in this. I absolutely love it. I have put a sizable dent, which you can't really tell, in this product because I use it so 
much. I only put a little bit on today because I really wasn't trying to look so, you know, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, glam today. Super opaque. The powders themselves are so finely milled that they're so easy to work with. I absolutely love how natural this color looks on the cheeks. It doesn't make you look like you just slapped on some orange eyeshadow or whatever on your cheeks and made it work that way. It doesn't look orange at all. It pulls more of the grayish undertones that you want for a contour shade, which I know that it's kind of hard to find the, that perfect grayish undertone contour. Not anymore. Not with this on the market. So I definitely, definitely love this. If you have not had any good luck look looking for this, try online. I know sometimes they do have these palettes that are so, you know, sought after online. The next product I have from Wet n Wild that has become a favorite of mine is the Mega Glow Illuminating Palette. This was the other release that Wet n Wild had over the past two months and everyone went nuts for it, including myself. I couldn't find mine for a couple of weeks until after it was released, so that was heartbreaking for me. I couldn't be one of the first to have it, but it's okay because I have it now and I'm thoroughly excited about it. Normally on a daily basis, I would use, before I got this, my either my Naked Flushed palette, which I love the highlight in this palette, I absolutely adore it, or one of my Physicians Formula highlighters, their shimmer strips. The only issue I ever have with the Physicians Formula shimmer strips is that the strips themselves are made for ants, essentially, and I can never get my highlighting brush, at least all of it into only one shade. When you go for one shade, you're essentially picking up all the other shades around it because it's such a small strip. What Wet n Wild did was make their palettes big enough and their strips big enough to where you can fit any size brush into one of the colors and only get that one color if you're looking for one color. Today I picked up these two, the pinky and the shell white one and put that on my cheeks. Can't really see it, but because I can't really turn my head that way because it hurts kind of. But this is a beautiful, very natural highlight for many, many skin tones. These are very finely milled, very, very fine shimmers, and it just creates a very natural glow to your skin. Mascara of the month goes to my Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. This is only a sample, but I cannot tell you how in love with this mascara I am. I have not found a high-end mascara that has made my lashes look so fanned out and so voluminous. Voluminous? Voluminous? In a very long time. The last one I used that was this good, I think, was the Urban Decay Curling Mascara. And that one was like a cult favorite of mine for a very long time. For lippies of the month, I'm going to go ahead and do a shout out to my Gwen Stefani lipstick from Urban Decay in the shade Rocksteady. This lipstick is honestly a very big favorite of mine. Hi, babe. This color was one of the most sought after lipsticks in this collection because it's such a beautiful color. Um, it's a lot darker than what I saw online. This online looked a lot lighter. It looked more of a more vivid red. However, I'm actually glad it wasn't a more vivid red because this has turned out to be one of my all-time favorite lipsticks in my collection, which you guys know I have a lot of lipsticks. Go ahead and swatch it right there. The color of this is, I would describe it as more of like a raspberry or... I don't know, a cherry red. Has some magenta undertones to it, but it mostly pulls red. And I absolutely love the formulation. It's so creamy, so long wearing, and so opaque. I can do one swatch on my lips for each part of my lips, and it's that's that's it. It's already as bright as it's going to get. It's so, so nice and so comfortable and so long wearing. So if you haven't gotten your hands on any of these, I highly suggest doing it. And again, this one is in the shade Rocksteady. My last favorite of the month is going to go to the Vivid Matte Liquids from Maybelline. I was very skeptical at first because before I even got these in the mail, I had seen some very mixed reviews about these. Some people said they were really good, some people said they were really bad, but I'm not the kind of person who likes to trust other opinions. I like to invest in a product with my own money, if I can, and try it out for myself and gather my own opinions about it. I, at first, like I said, was very skeptical, but after the first few times of using it on my lips, these are some of the best I got a little excited there. <laughs> These go for, I'm pretty sure, like $5, $6 at most. I absolutely love how beautiful these feel and look on the lips. I wouldn't say they are a one swatch full pasty kind of lip product compared to another product that I have to show you guys in a minute. They are really, really nice in quality. One or two applications, you're going to get really, really full coverage uh, application, which I really enjoy. Um, long wearing, very long wearing, and what makes them more 
impressive is the fact that they don't lose their bombiness. The bombiness you feel with the initial swatch on your lips is what you feel for the remainder of the length of wear. They didn't sacrifice the feel of the lipstick, nor did they sacrifice the color of it. They made it just perfect. Definitely give them a shy. Just go to your local store, pick one up, one that you know you'll wear, and try it out a couple times and make your own opinion on them. But this is just my opinion. I absolutely love these. So, yeah. Now for my non-beauty favorites. The first one I have is actually a book. I actually have a couple of books I want to talk to you guys about. Um, the first one is this one, V.C. Andrews Heaven. I have always loved V.C. Andrews for a very long time. Actually, a good friend of mine introduced me to her books. And it's kind of hard to describe her the way she writes or what her books are mainly about. They are romantic, but they're very scandalous. My favorite series that she's ever written was the Ruby series. That was the first one I ever read, and it was, to me, the most, like, I don't know, memorable book series that she's ever written. So if you've never read a V.C. Andrews book, I definitely, definitely suggest doing it. And then the last non-beauty favorite of the month, it goes to you guys, my subscribers. Those of you who I'm actually subscribed to on YouTube, I've got to say over the past few months, I've been super unimpressed with a lot of the content that these bigger YouTubers, the famous YouTubers who make millions of dollars every year on YouTube, with what they put out. I just feel like I've been more inspired by my smaller YouTuber subscribers, those of you with channels, those of you, those of you who just comment on my videos and tell me like what you guys want to see. You guys are the reason why I keep doing what I'm doing. You know, all, I think it's 1200 of you guys now who watch my channel, like religiously, I thank you guys so much for watching. I've just realized that a lot of the YouTubers that we have who are more famous now, um, I'm talking about Miss Remy Ashton, Nikki and Gabby, um, who else did I start? I stopped watching. 11th Gorgeous. I've just been so annoyed with their content lately, and I feel bad because I used to love watching their channels, but I've just reached the point where nothing they do to me is interesting anymore. They were original back then because they were at the forefront of this, you know, with everyone having channels nowadays, and I feel like they were unique because they had excellent filming skills, excellent backgrounds, excellent concepts, excellent quality content at one point, and they had something different every day. Nowadays, I can't tell you how many times I've seen so many different variations of a morning routine in one week from the same YouTuber, and it's annoying because it's the same products, the same looks, the same products with different clothing, different days of the week. It's annoying. So, I don't know. I've been uninspired from them. I just, I, I have been religiously watching those of you with your channels on here. Subscribe to me. I have been, I have been really into watching my smaller YouTubers. Those of you who are like me, who only have like 1,200 people watching your channels, I find so much inspiration from you guys more than I will ever get inspiration from a bigger YouTuber. So, you guys are my last monthly favorite, and I love you guys so much. Please don't ever lose the creativity you guys have. Some of you guys are so talented and so amazing at what you do. Um, so yeah, you guys are my last favorite of the month. That's all I have for you guys for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any comments, questions, or requests, leave them down below, and I will see you guys in my next video. I love you. Bye.